Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> okay, welcome back, everyone. Um, I'm here today to talk about the Pennine Barrier Ultra by GB Ultras. I've got the t-shirt on. Let's talk about it. Let's let's go over how the day went because it was the day. So yeah, so I arrived on the Friday. Um, on the Friday, we were staying at Riverside campsite. It was lovely. Um, would highly recommend staying there if you plan on doing this in the future. So uh, we went down on the Friday evening, set up camp, then went to the finish line to get, well, start line, finish line, the camp, the main area to pick up my race number and my t-shirt and just say hello to everybody <laughs> down there. Um, so that was really nice. Um, I got my pictures taken um, and I was feeling very optimistic. I was feeling ready. I was feeling excited. So we both got up at about half four, um, we had breakfast and got ready and then made our way to the start line. Good morning, it's 5am, uh, we are all just getting ready and dressed, um, making porridge and uh, yeah, looking forward to the day. Hello, I'm walking down to the start line. Um, I'm actually walking part of the route right now. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. I've got water. I've got a snack for the start line because I'm always hungry on the start line. So the Pennine Barrier Ultra is a 50 mile ultra by GB Ultras. Here's my t-shirt. And it starts in Malham. You go from Malham, you go to Malham Tarn. From Malham Tarn, you go over Fountain Spell. Then you do the Yorkshire Three Peaks. So you do Penny Ghent. Wernside, Ingleborough, then you go back to Fountain Spell, then you go round the other side of Malham Tarn, and then back down to Malham. So, all, yeah, that sounds simple enough, right? Um, I'd done the Yorkshire Three Peaks in October, it was beautiful weather. Um, it wasn't like boiling hot, but it was like lovely, and I could see the views. Um, <laughs> Today, that, that, you know, this time it was not the case. Um, we'd been told all week that it was going to be quite decent weather. And then when we got there, we said, they said, oh, it'll rain in the morning. We were checking them, the, the weather report and they were like, oh, it might rain a bit in the morning and then it'll clear up in the afternoon. Um, newsflash, it didn't. It was really, really wet and rainy for the entire day. Um, so when we set off, I was feeling really good. I was feeling really happy. Um, I was feeling really optimistic. I was just kind of like thinking, oh, it's a nice day out. Um, I'd done the Yorkshire Three Peaks in nine hours. So I thought, right, we're going to be done around 15 hours, 14, 15 hours. That was my goal. Um, to include going, you know, back and forth to Malin. And, um, yeah, that plan very fast, very quickly went out the window. Um, Registration. Where we going? When Lionel and I did the Stone 24. Four hundred and four steps. That's what she said. That's just what we got told. How's that your introduction to the stairs? <laughs> so you can count them down. Um, first checkpoint is twelve miles in, and um, that's quite a long stretch. Uh, but because of the way that you know this ultra works, is there's only so many places that you can have uh, the checkpoints so you know you've got to carry quite a bit of food with you we're coming up to about four miles in five five miles in and uh the fog is making me like 
worried that I'm going to get cold. But when I had my jacket on, I was too hot. So, hmm, I shall have to decide at some point, but I'm not cold. It's so cold. It's like so cold. Rain. Oh, we're coming up to the first checkpoint. I already feel like I've finished my race, but I've got to keep going. Oh, it's so cold, I can barely feel my legs. I should not have put shorts on, but you know, we live with the consequences. So we get up to Penny Ghent. Penny Ghent is lovely, but it you can't see anything. The fog is like mental. Uh, people had already begun to drop out at the first checkpoint, um, which, you know, it's just a testament to how difficult this race is. Um, Ian, it's, it's beautiful and it's, it's so challenging and you've got to kind of separate the race itself from the race organizers. The race itself, the route itself is difficult. It's hard. You've got to put the effort in to get in that cutoff time, which is 18 hours. You've got to work really hard. But then the race organizers, they're in charge of making sure you're safe, making sure you are well fed or you know that there are options for you, making sure that you feel like at any point you can drop out and you're not just gonna be left in the middle of the wilderness somewhere. And it's important to recognize the difference. And GB Ultra is in there, you know, they can't control the weather, they can't control the conditions, um, they can only control their race. So perhaps to GB Ultras, they did an amazing job of just making sure that we all felt safe. Um, whilst I, I did not enjoy the weather or the conditions or, you know, my own pain, I felt safe the whole way around. I didn't feel like I was just kind of abandoned and left on a hill somewhere and I didn't know where to go. Uh, currently climbing a pen again. Ooh, there we go. I don't even know if you can hear me because of the wind, but this is what it looks like. Oh, I'm about four hours in, I'd say, around there. Uh, we've hit about 13, 14 miles. I had so much cheese at the checkpoint. Oh, it was hitting the spot. We'll do it. We'll get up there. We'll do this. There are signs telling you where to go. There are marshals everywhere so you don't feel like you're gonna get lost. So we got over Penny Gen. Penny Gen, I was still feeling really good. Um, I, I think Penny Gen's probably my favorite of the three. Um, I think it's, you, you have to kind of scramble your way up there but it's quite a short climb because you're kind of going up quite steep so it's quite a short climb up to the top. Um, we had our picture on the top and then we started the lovely descent down. Right, we've summited in, uh, which one was that? Penny again. We've summited Penny again. Um, I'll put a picture here because I didn't take a video because I was tired. Um, we're on our way down Penny again now to checkpoint two, and then it'll be up work side. Now, normally there's a lovely view here that I'd be able to show off to you, but right now we look like we're at the drop off from Finding Nemo. So, sorry I can't show you more, but it is beautiful, trust me. <laughs> now there's quite a big chunk between Penny Ghent and Wernside, um, and that was, <laughs> that was great. We were just running, we saw sheep, uh, we were taking on food, I was still drinking loads of water, everything was going really, really well, um, but it was cold. <laughs> And I'd worn shorts because I was told all week that the weather was gonna clear up. So I was in shorts that I immediately regretted as soon as I put them on. But, you know, in the future, just don't wear shorts. So we got to Wernside and we were about 20, 21 miles in. Yeah, about 21 miles in. We are now, Walking up Wernside, or beginning to anyway. But oh, that's nice. Um, yeah, we're walking up Wernside, or 
starting to um, about I want to say about 22 maybe 23 miles in now I'm tired I'm, uh, I'm really tired my, my legs hurt my feet hurt I'm tired I just want to sit down I keep forgetting to sit down at the checkpoints but yeah, I'm... I have a love-hate relationship with Wernside um, it's it's hard on a day when you can see where you're going. It's even harder on a day when you approach the path and you've got the viaduct and it's beautiful and you can see Wernside in the back. Wonderful. We approached Wernside, we could see the viaduct and the mountain was just gone. There was nothing there because the fog was so thick that you couldn't see the mountain. Um, so it was just the fact of get your head down, let's keep going. It's four miles from the checkpoint to the summit. That's how long it is. And when I say those four miles felt like the longest four miles of my life, I am not joking. And it was just soul destroying because we couldn't see where we were going. I couldn't see the top. Um, I couldn't see how far I had left. I was just trudging up and up and up and it was getting colder and colder and colder. But it was really nice because every now and then a marshal would just kind of pop out the fog and be like, you're doing really well. And I was like, thank you. And because it's a Saturday that the race is run on, you are with other members of the public. And there was a lot of hikers out there. Uh, kudos to those hikers as well. So we were going up Wernside and I started to cry because I was tired and it was so cold. So we were probably about 500 meters from the top of Wernside and I'd literally just started breaking down. Like I, I had tears running down my face. I had hikers on the way down asking me if I was okay, if I needed a hug. Um, I had the marshals asking me if I was okay. Um, and all I kept thinking was I need, like what is the cutoff time for this checkpoint? Because we need to get there before this cutoff time. And this was about halfway through the race. Um, and I was so irritated just because I couldn't see anything. So we get to the summit of Wernside and there's this lovely marshal there and I'm crying and I'm irritated and I'm angry and I shouted at him and I apologize right now, Mr. Marshall, whoever you were, I'm sorry for shouting at you. I was very emotional. I was tired. I should not have shouted at you, but thank you for the hug. <laughs> um, it's a really funny picture because if you look at my face, um, I am, I've got like tears running down my eyes <laughs> because I was so, I was like crying so hard, but I was just, like, at least we're at the top. We go all the way down one side. It's a lot quicker. It's very technical. On halfway down, we see lovely race director, um, Laurie Yates, who gave me a, another big hug uh, and was like, it's only a, a, like a mile and a half down. So I was like, okay, we've got this. Um, I get down to the bottom and I can't stop shaking. I'm so cold by this point. Um, my dad said that I was a funny color. The hair on my legs was, had like um, moist, like, like droplets on like mildew. <laughs> <laughs> um, which was, it was fun to look at and I wish I'd taken a picture, but oh well. We get into that checkpoint and I'm just this shaking cold mess. And I've been to this hut before. The hut is owned by Philpins Farm and it's got like a snack bar and toilets. So they've got these vending machines that have got hot chocolate in. And I had been thinking about this hot chocolate since the start of the race, because I remember it from when we walked, well, like jogged it in October. So I was like, I'm so excited for my hot chocolate. And I'd completely forgotten about it. And I needed the loo and I needed to put my base layer on. So I was stood there and shaking. I could barely even like, I was, I, I, don't tell, don't tell the race directors, but I do think I was pretty hypothermic, but don't tell them, don't tell them. My dad wandered over, my dad was running with me. He came over and he just handed me this hot chocolate while I was in the, the queue for the toilets. And I was like, thank you. And um, I start crying again, um, put my base layer on, drink this hot chocolate. And the 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 marshals were in, uh, like, just once again, amazing. I was just stood there drinking this hot chocolate and I probably just looked like glazed over. And she took my water bottles out. She refilled my water bottles. Um, she was asking me what food I wanted. I was like, I need, I need, I need savory. I've had lots of sweet. I'm a bit sick of sweet. And they were just filling up my little pockets with just more snacks. Um, and just being like, 
you know, talking me through, just being like, right, you've got Ingleborough next. Just think that's your last big mountain, Ingleborough. That's all you've got. You can do this. Um, and it was a really nice balance between them being very sympathetic about how cold I was, but also very like motivating of being like, you can do this. At this point, I was really kind of thinking, do I like, I don't know if I could carry on. Um, I was very, very cold. Um, but I knew that if I started running again, my, my body temperature would go up a little bit and um, I might like get myself out of this state. Now, if you've done the Yorkshire Three Peaks, you'll know that Ingleborough has that insane climb where you literally like scale the side of the mountain. Um, the cutoffs were kind of looming closer. We were only about 40 minutes ahead of the cutoff at this point. And I wasn't about to like not get my medal <laughs> because I was like trying to figure out how the GoPro, where my GoPro was and where my phone was and you know. So we're just, you know, I've got pictures and I'll just have to, you'll just have to imagine the rest of the race, but just it, just think what has been is what will be. So rain, fog, <laughs> mist, cold, me. You, you climb up the side and then you turn and then you walk up some more steps. And then if you've been on the top of Ingleborough, it's like the moon, it's like flat and it's just got the one pedestal in the middle and it, the, it's all rocks all on the top. So this is what I was anticipating and I was thinking, it's so foggy up here, like, how are we ever going to find this, this pedestal? So we get to the top and race director Wayne Drinkwater is there, he's the race founder. And he's there and he's all kitted out because he's got his, like, emergency bag on to make sure that everybody's safe. There's about four or five marshals there as well. And uh, he's taking pictures of me and then he says, oh, by the way, you don't have to go on to the... the Go, you don't have to go find the pedestal, you can just go straight back down. Because it was so claggy, they were worried that people would wander off and then wouldn't be able to find their way back because it, you literally just could not see more than like a meter ahead of you. And I started to cry again. Because <laughs> um, I just wanted to get back down off in Gulbera. And, and um, he was laughing at me and the marshals gave me a hug again. And um, he took a picture of me and my dad and once again you can see that I'm crying in these pictures and I think it's just tears of relief that I didn't have to, I didn't have to walk across the top. Good for, good, good safety recognition right there, you know, once again GB Ultras can see where the hazard is and they just, you know, make it, you know, just a tad easier, just a tad easier for us. Laura had made multiple jokes that, um, it was my fault that it though the weather was so bad because I did the Chester 50 in March and it was the worst weather that they'd ever seen at that race. And then I've come to do the Pennine Barrier and in, uh, it was the worst weather that they'd seen in this race as well. So I'm, you'll be glad to know, GB Ultras community, that I will not be running any more GB Ultras events for the rest of the year. So have fun in your beautiful weather. So the, the final section is you go over kind of the bottom of Penny Gamp and you drop down and you're back at what is the first checkpoint that you reach, first of all. And Wayne is there again. How he managed to get from the top, like, <laughs> he's just speed demon. And I was at the back and I was, you know, I just had my head down and I was walking and I was weirdly singing the chicken run theme tune in my head because that was helping. David comes up to me and he walks next to me. And he gave me some real tough love. <laughs> and all day I'd had people be so nice to me and be like, it's okay, everything's fine. And David knew exactly that in that moment for those final 12 miles, um, as I'm going, I can't do this. I'm, we're not gonna make it. Like, I'm so tired. I like, I just, I don't know what I'm gonna do. 12 miles, four hours, Fountain Spell. Once we got to the summit of Fountain Spell, it was the final, that was it. That was the final climb it started getting dark. And as we were climbing fountains fell, the fog crept back in again. And my dad took this amazing picture of the fog and then me grumpily following him up the hill. And I just look so sad, <laughs> so tired. So the final 10K, we get to Malam Tarn. I'm so cold, I wrap myself in my foil blanket. Um, again, this is my fault, not GB Ultras. Just want to state that GB Ultras are like, they, the way they've set out, made sure that everybody was okay. Great. It was my fault. I wore shorts. And yeah, and the, the way the, the route works is you kind of, you spiral down 
um, so we could see the finish line and the clock was ticking by and you we were coming up to the finish line and you kind of you come to the back of it you come round the field and then you come round and then through the front of it to cross kind of was checking my watch and it was like 10 to midnight and I was like I am not missing out on my medal with 10 minutes to go when the finish line is there and I turn around and I can't see my dad my dad was so tired and he was like the last person we get round and I wait in the gate and um I'm going come on dad let's go let's go and it was a kind of a we fin we started this together we're going to finish this together sort of thing um so we did and we finished and I don't know how we finished <laughs> um but we were the final finishers me and my dad, we came in in like 17 hours, 54 minutes. I feel proud of myself. I feel very mixed feelings about it. I'm very proud of myself. Um, my friend texted me saying that I'm Jasmine Paris because I finished with minutes to spare and so did she. And that made me feel really good about myself. <laughs> the Pennine Barrier Ultra, what do we think? It's a, it's a hard one. It's rough. Congratulations to the winner, um, Daniel Weller. Daniel Weller won it in seven hours, seven and a half hours, which was a new course record. Incredible. Like, how, how? <laughs> That's what I wanna know. Uh, congratulations to Carol Newman. Carol Newman was the female finisher. She did it in 10 hours, nine minutes and 23 seconds, which is, again, insane, incredible. If you are wanting to do this race, um, my tips, use poles. I didn't use poles. I really regret not using poles, I think using poles would have just given me something else to really kind of like grasp on. I had to rely on my legs the entire time, which probably slowed me down. My other advice is don't wear shorts. <laughs> it's cold at the top, no matter what the weather, it's cold. I don't know why I wore shorts. I was an idiot. I can't recommend any GB Ultras event enough. They are amazing at making you feel safe and amazing at making you feel well ca well cared for. They are organized. Uh, you feel like you are well taken care of every time you get into the checkpoints. In the link description below, I will put the link for the Pennine Barrier Ultra. Um, the entries are now open. So feel free, you'll probably do it way better than I did. And whether you were first or whether you were last, like me and my dad, I think we all, we all, found out something about ourselves on the hills that day. Um, I found out that I don't like Wernside. Head over to Ultra Runner magazine. Um, over there we do race director interviews. We do interviews with some of your favorite athletes. We do gear reviews. We talk about all the, the news going on, uh, the FKTs. Um, it's a hub for everything Ultra Running. And uh, my name's Emily Yarwood. And until next time, keep running. <laughs>